So this is just a uh, fairly quick video to show uh, installation and configuration of an OpenBSD seed box, uh, which I've not seen a lot of information about, but it's very, very simple to do, very simple to configure, and uh, yeah, I just prefer OpenBSD to Linux, so it's what I use. So this is just the installation, it's pretty much straightforward, not very much to explain, just doing network configuration right now and it's going to ask to configure users. You'll want to configure a local account for yourself, uh, but other than that, pretty much it. You'll want to disable SSH logins to root as well, because it's a bit of a security risk. And use DUIDs in FSAB, because it's better than using device names. More consistent. So now we're creating all the partitions. You can use the auto layout if it looks good to you. It usually is pretty good. Uh, and then we just say done. And it mounts all of the partitions which we created. Now we're just going to get all the sets, uh, sorry, some of the sets from uh, the mirror, from the FTP mirror. So first deselect everything. Then we'll get all the BSD kernels. We'll get the base, we'll get etc. And we'll get the manual pages. Uh, and the manual pages obviously aren't strictly necessary, but it's a good idea to have them. And now it'll ask you if you want to install non-free firmware on the first boot, and the answer is obviously no, because it's proprietary crap, and nobody wants that. And now we rejoin at the login screen, and I log in as with my local account, and uh, start downloading my authorized keys, uh, my pub key, uh, which I'll put a link to in the description, but you'll want to use your own pub key. Then I change the permissions on SSH so the daemon doesn't complain. Then I log in as root, uh, to do some configuration changes. Uh, first off though, uh, I change my package path in my profile uh, so that the package manager knows where to get its files and we use uh, command substitution for uname r and uname m so that it works between upgrades and then we export it so that other programs know. Now we source the profile and we update the packages. Now we install rtorrent and detach rtorrent is the torrent client which we'll be using and detach is essentially the uh, it creates a socket by which you can access a program which is running uh, detached from your uh, current terminal which has a variety of benefits so now we're installing rtorrent and detach and just waiting for those to finish and now that they've finished I'm just going to download uh, my SSHD config again link in the description or you can use your own SSHD config but you'll want to use the following uh, which uh, essentially makes it so that the rtorrent user uh, doesn't have the permission to do TCP forwarding has to go into SFTP is created to its home directory and in my case, has password authentication, whereas other users can't use password authentication. We also add the rtorrent user to allow users in uh, in sshd config, so that it's allowed to log in over ssh. And now we create the mount point, and uh, add a disk label to sdo, which is the disk which I'm using for torrents. Now d creates a default disk label, aa adds partition a, and we just use the defaults. Now we write the label. Now we're going to create the new file system. I'm using an FFS2 file system because FFS1 only allows for up to one terabyte and this disk is two terabytes. And that creates all the super block mirrors. And once that's done, you can see the DUID at the top. Uh, this E4, E96. And we pass it out with awk uh, and use the variable that we put this into uh, to create an, F uh, an FS tab entry. And we use a here document uh, and essentially just creates a new FS tab entry with no A time for less disk access, no exec, no dev, no SUID for security, and zero to uh, dump zero and uh, second priority for file system check. Then we mount it and create the directories on that file system, which rtorrent will use to sort data, the session information, the watch data. And now I'm downloading the rtorrent configuration file, again, link in the description. Now we add the rtorrent user, the unprivileged rtorrent user and set its home directory to mount rtorrent and the UID must, between, must be between 500 and 999 uh, which makes it a system user and we create a password for that user now we change the ownership of the files in its home directory to the rtorrent user 
but we don't want the actual direct home directory itself to be owned by our torrent, so we change that to the root user again. Now we configure RC local, which executes after boot, uh, to launch DTAC as the rtorrent user, which then launch creates a socket which goes to rtorrent. Now we're changing some sysctl variables. Uh, kern.buffcache percent changes the file system cache availability. DDB panic changes uh, what to do on a kernel panic, and essentially zero means uh, just restart, which is what you want, probably. Now I'm just demonstrating uh, what we can do with this system, so I'm logging as the rtorrent user. And we go into the watch directory, which is where rtorrent uh, finds new torrent files. And I download uh, Big Bug Bunny, which is, I think, I think is some Creative Commons uh, video made in Blender. And we can see, after a few seconds, our torrent begins automatically downloading, uh, just because this torrent is in its watch directory. And if we now uh, start to come out of our torrent, we can then see that SFTP uh, is also available to access the data. So if I change to my user and SFTP uh, to the rtorrent user, obviously you can do this from another computer by providing the IP instead of local host, uh, and then you can see there is the data, and we're recruited to this directory, this is as far up the chain as we can go, and there's the data. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful, and have a nice day.